We've been waiting a long time for this. Ladies and gentlemen, AMD's 6000 series is finally available in mini PC form. Say hello to USB 4, DDR5 and RDNA 2 graphics. One small step for mini PCs, one large step for graphics performance. Does it make a big difference? You betcha, but whether you actually need it depends on how you use your mini PC. One of the first Ryzen 6000 series units available is the Minis Forum UM690 featuring the Ryzen 9 6900HX. Like the previous 5900HX, it's an 8 core 16 thread CPU, but exchanges the very old Vega graphics architecture from 2017 for RDNA 2 from 2020. You can actually game on this mini PC surprisingly well, thanks to its Radeon 680M graphics. I bought the 6900HX for US$499, dollars, which is bare bones and requires memory, storage and an operating system. If you buy one of the pre-built options, you'll get Windows 11 Pro. Inside the box is a spare pair of rubber feet, power cable and 120 watt power supply, a HDMI cable, SATA expansion cable, vertical stand and monitor mount. The mini PC itself looks very similar to the previous UM560 and 580 units. It has the same rubber coat on the top and bottom and is mostly made out of plastic. It's a solid unit and looks pretty decent whether you place it on the desk or on its stand. The biggest change comes with the port selection. Now there's a USB 4 port which is 40 gigabit capable. It can output to a display or use Thunderbolt 3 or 4 devices such as an external graphics card enclosure. The other type C is 10 gigabit. Next to them is a combo audio jack and reset button, which doubles up as a clear CMOS button when you hold it for 10 seconds while the unit is off. On the back, there are four 10 gigabit USB type A ports, 2.5 gigabit ethernet and dual HDMI, allowing for dual 4K60 displays. The USB 4 port can handle up to an 8K display. The 6900HX needs more power than previous units in this line. So the 100 watt USB-C power delivery has gone out the window and has been replaced with the 120 watt barrel jack power supply. A high spec of USB power delivery is coming soon, but it's not ready to make it into this unit. One other thing this series of minis includes is a digital microphone. So for those important calls, you only need a pair of headphones or speakers to get things going. I just need a webcam to get things going. Opening the UM690 isn't difficult, just annoying. There are four pieces of glued on rubber feet to remove, followed by four screws and then the lid, which needs some sort of small thin tool to pry it open with. Since I'm not keen on dropping my pants on camera, I'll use this one, which is part of my screwdriver set. Okay. Inside it's pretty similar to the previous units, but the RAM slots are now DDR5 Sodom and the NVMe drive is PCIe Gen 4 instead of 3. But again, there's no thermal pad included for the bare bones unit. The SATA cable goes here for 2.5 inch SSDs, the Wi-Fi card is replaceable and the CMOS battery is easily accessible. Nice! My Ubuntu test off the USB mostly worked. There was an audio playback issue but that would probably be fixed with a full installation and driver update. Apart from that, everything else worked fine. For my Windows tests, I'm using an SK Hynix 4800 DDR5 memory kit, which overclocks like a champion. Yes, that's right. For the first time in a long while, the UM690 has memory overclocking options. This is important as faster memory speeds provide better graphics performance. I'll be showing the difference side by side shortly. But before that, let's check out the benchmarks. The UM690 slots in at around the halfway mark among these minis in the single core Cinebench CPU test. It's 8% ahead of the previous generation 5900HX, but it's 13% behind the i7 NUC12 Pro. In multi-core, it falls behind the 5900HX, and we'll go into why that's the case later. While it is 6% behind the 5900HX, it's still 22% ahead of the i7 NUC12 Pro. For encoding a short video, the UM690 does well, nabbing second spot on the list with a 5% lead over the i7 NUC12 Pro. 
Okay, so my DDR5 kit overclocked to 6000 MHz from the base speed of 4800. So I've tested 3D Mark with a few different speeds to show how performance scales. From the bottom to the top, there's just over a 9% increase in DX11, or around a 3% performance improvement every 400 MHz increase. With DX12, total improvement is just over 8%. How memory bandwidth will affect performance depends on the application, but in Doom Eternal, there's up to a 9% increase in frames per second from the base memory speed to the top. If we slot in the slowest and fastest 3D Mark results against the other mini PCs with integrated graphics, the UM690 is far ahead, 31% against the i7 NUC12 Pro, and a generational leap of 55%. In DX12, it's 48% ahead of Intel's best, and a generational increase of 75%. That's huge! And the 680M isn't that far off the 8709G found in the gaming NUC Hades Canyon from a few years back. When it comes to graphics performance, Intel is in a world of trouble, especially since their 3D Mark results never match performance in actual games. Speaking of actual games, let's look at actual games! The graphics performance has increased so much that most games can now be played at 1080p instead of 720p, which is great to see. First up are the direct comparisons against the previous generation, and these are at 1080p low settings. Just a heads up, the 5900HX footage won't line up as back when I reviewed it, I wasn't doing direct comparisons with footage, but the data is still valid. Forza Horizon 5 sees massive gains. At 6000 MHz memory speed, it's over 100% faster. Awesome! See? No false advertising. Doom Eternal doesn't perform as well, but it's still around 40% faster with a memory overclock. There's another big win for RDNA 2 graphics with Elden Ring. Instead of being in the mid 20 FPS range, it's now in the mid 40s. And it's the same deal with Cyberpunk 2077. Here's how God of War holds up on the new Mini. There's a large increase for the faster memory. The UM690 has a better frame rate than the i7 NUC12 Pro did at the lower 720p resolution. It's a huge difference. With RDNA 2 graphics, We've now got playable frame rates for most games at 1080p. I had a request to test Street Fighter V on the UM690. At 1080p, high settings using the base memory speed, it was close to a lock 60 FPS with an average of 59.94. Overclocked memory resulted in a 59.97 average. Not quite a lock 60 FPS there either. Another request was to compare the UM690 against a dedicated gaming mini PC such as the HX90G, which has a Radeon 6600M GPU. So here's a couple of games at 1080p high. While there's still a big difference in performance, the gap has narrowed quite a bit. But in Forza Horizon 5, you are getting close to three times the frame rate with a dedicated GPU. Now I wanted to touch on using an eGPU enclosure with a USB 4 port. Here I'm using an RX 6700 XT in a Razer Core X enclosure, but there's a problem. Windows crashes with the eGPU connected on boot. I can only get it to work by connecting the USB cable after Windows has already booted. A fresh install made no difference. I don't have a spare Nvidia card to test at the moment, but just be aware that eGPUs can be very frustrating to get working properly. Emulation is another area that sees a nice benefit with this mini PC. The UM690 performs the best of any mini PC this size so far. It still doesn't get 60fps in Breath of the Wild, but the frame rate has improved. You can even play quite a few PS3 games at 1080p. Here are three examples with unlocked frame rates. Motorstorm still runs a bit slow, but much better than what we've seen before. Now let's check out the BIOS and memory overclocking. There are some things to be aware of. There's no XMP memory support, 
so expensive RAM with low latency isn't going to work well. The UM690 only supports JEDEC profiles, so stick with the cheaper memory kits if you're buying the bare bones unit. Mash the delete key when powering on the unit to get into the BIOS. Use the keyboard to go into advanced options and then press enter on SMU common options. You want to go to active memory settings and enable it. Set it to whatever speed you want. If I went any higher than 6000, my mini would hard freeze on the mini's forum logo screen. If your mini freezes and you can't get back into the BIOS, unplug the power and hold the reset button for 10 seconds. That will reset the BIOS back to its default settings. Another thing to change is the GFX setting. This is how much memory you'll dedicate exclusively to the integrated graphics as VRAM. The default is 2GB, which I think is too low. For a 16GB kit, I recommend 4GB, and for a 32GB kit, you can go up to 8. But remember, the more VRAM you dedicate to your integrated graphics, the less system memory Windows will have available. So there's a trade-off. I was able to run Windows with a 16GB kit and using the 8GB VRAM setting, but it might run out of system memory when running too many applications or playing games. I thought the auto option would work, but I just get a black screen after the Mini's forum logo. Some other things you can do is change the fan settings. You could lower this full PWM temperature setting to something like 85. You can also lower the max power limit if you don't mind less performance for better cooling and less fan noise. There are more advanced options such as sustained power limit and TJ Maxx. One final thing to note, to be fully Windows 11 compatible, PCs need to support Secure Boot, but it's missing in the BIOS out of the box. The eSports game Valorant must have Secure Boot enabled to work. So I reached out to Mini's forum on Twitter, and while initially the response wasn't encouraging, I received a BIOS update later which added the Secure Boot option. If you need it, be sure to reach out to Mini's forum for the BIOS update file. Unfortunately, MSI Afterburner is incompatible with the latest version of Valorant, so I can't show a direct comparison. But it does run around the 200 FPS mark, which again, is the best we've seen for a Mini this size. Idle power consumption is in line with the 12th Gen Nux, and it's pretty much the same when it comes to max power draw as well. That's a big increase in power over the UM580, it means more heat. At 89C, the CPU does thermal throttle and it does affect gaming performance. You will notice the frame rate drop a bit after playing for longer periods. It's also why the UM690 falls behind the 5900HX in the 10 minute Cinebench R23 test. The cooling here under load struggles. But you can say the same for any mini PC this size with this power draw. With no thermal pad included and 100 watts of power running through the CPU's silicon veins, the NVMe storage drive hits 74C, which isn't good. The controller is easily going to hit 100C and thermal throttle. And of course, more heat means more fan noise, and it's gone up over the previous units. While the UM690 is quiet at idle, it's definitely audible under load. Still, it isn't bad, and other minis are noisier. Overall, I'm happy to see the Ryzen 6000 series finally hit mini PC form. RDNA 2 graphics doesn't disappoint with huge gains in performance. The vertical stand that comes with the Mini's Forum Venus series is a nice extra for those wanting to get a little more horizontal space on their desk. It's also a decent looking box, which is saying something when you've got stuff that looks like this or this. The addition of USB 4 and PCIe Gen 4 brings the AMD Minis in line with Intel NUX and allows you to use an external GPU or other Thunderbolt device. As mentioned earlier, performance throttles as the unit heats up and it isn't consistent. The cooling has trouble keeping up under load and the NVMe drive gets hot. It's possible Mini's forum provides a thermal pad for the M.2 drive with the pre-built options which should help reduce its temperature under load. But it's not included with the bare bones. Another option is to use a 2.5 inch SSD. So, while Intel is managing to stay competitive in CPU performance, AMD Minis now have the same features such as USB 4 
and PCIe Gen 4 support. But thanks to RDNA 2 and DDR5, the Ryzen 6000 series is far ahead in the graphics department. So would I recommend it? Well, long-time viewers know that I prefer the best bang for buck, cool and quiet options, which are usually in the mid-range. This is the top CPU in AMD's lineup. So if you want the best, it's decently priced and compares well to the competition. But I've got more Ryzen 6000 series mini PC reviews coming up. So I recommend waiting for those first before hitting that buy button. And if you want a mini PC with a lot more gaming performance, you should really check out my review of the Minis Forum HX90G. It's a great gaming mini PC. Cheers!